We're pleased to be joined by Nico Horner as they get ready to take on the New York Yankees. It's a game many of you will see this afternoon at the friendly confines. Nico, thank you very much for joining us. These games and this series obviously very crucial. Your team has had quite a week that combined no hitter against the Pittsburgh Pirates. Just tell us about the mood in the clubhouse right now as we enter the stretch run. That was a nice little intro you guys gave me that got me feeling good Friday morning. Yeah, and, um, up, Nico. There you go, man. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, the mood's in a good place. We had a really special road trip where, you know, went eight of nine in three series and uh, put us in a spot where we're, um, we've got a real chance in the wild card. Obviously, the days are numbered on the season and every game is, is extra meaningful, but that's what you asked for and uh, we're in a good spot. Nico, I see the sweatshirt. September is my favorite month in Chicago. Is it 60 degrees yeah. with a chill in the air? I mean, I want to stand where you're standing right now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's trying. Uh, it's it's getting a little cooler. The ivy's not turning yet, but hopefully we're playing long enough where it's it's getting brown out there. Nico, I read a stat the other day on the air, and I had to check it with research. It was the Cubs had scored 103 runs in an 11 game span. I had to check it twice because I was just blown away by it. What do you attribute that to as a team? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think the biggest difference for us offensively has been from uh, the bottom of our order with uh, Pete and Miguel Amaya and the production that those guys have brought throughout August was was incredible, playing key defensive positions and um, really setting the tone for the top of the lineup, and it was amazing what they were able to do for us. Nico, Anthony Rizzo back in Wrigley. You expect him to get a standing O? Oh, yeah, of course. Uh, you, may, you might even see that from some guys on our bench, or he deserves all of it. Um, it's going to be a really special thing to see him here today. Anthony, what does he kind of put into words what he means to that fan base? Yeah, I think I think why people were so drawn to him was uh, a couple things. I think one being that he was here from when the team was struggling all the mm -hmm. way through the World Series championship and beyond. And he was at the heart of it playing every day through every bit of that. So he really earned that. Um, that trophy as much as as much as anybody and that he played the game with emotion and humor yeah. and passion and in a way that made him accessible to people and uh, to his teammates too and you know I only uh, play with him for a couple years but um, was immediately open arms to me uh, and helping me understand what it means to be a big leaguer and figuring out what works to me and that's that's really all you can ask for from teammates mm. you, know, you know Nico you're the Cubs representative for the heart and hustle award what does that mean to you. Uh, it's a great award because obviously this game has a lot that you can't control and a lot of things that don't go well go well are changing every day and you know hopefully those are are a couple of qualities that you can you can bring out there every day and you know something that was always preached to me growing up so it's cool to get that recognition. What was your childhood like in the game in terms of baseball other sports how did you fall in love with this game. Yeah, uh, I mean, I'm from Oakland, California, so um, the A's and the Coliseum, I feel like it's kind of a fitting topic, right, coming down sure. to the end there, but yeah. that was definitely a big part of it. The fields I grew up playing on were, were kind of right below the Coliseum. You could see it from the fields, and um, so I, I, I did an interview about that yesterday. I've just been thinking about that, mm -hmm. but um, yeah, just really lucky to grow up in a place that had a lot of good baseball and talent around me where um, just was constantly around good athletes and a, a lot of joy for the game, and um yeah, I still love it. <laughs> you mentioned Pete, as in Pete Crow Armstrong. You've been very vocal about his impact on the game. I feel like, Nico, we're so numbers-based all the time that if you're not watching on a daily basis, you don't really know the impact that someone can make on a game that's not in the box score. What is that relationship between you and him like, and what do you see every day? Yeah, I mean, I think we have some, some similarities in that, you know, regardless of what we're doing at the plate, impact the game on defense and on the bases, but he's on a, a totally another level with that. I mean, just the other day, you know, he beats out a, a ground ball to short to second base, and then we scored two runs on the next pitch, and it, it's not something he gets he gets uh, credit for, but he basically got those two runs for us. He's someone that can win you a baseball game without getting in a hit, but he can also go into the upper deck, so it's, it's a pretty special skill set that there's no reason to even put a ceiling on it, and it's been so fun to watch him develop this year. Hey, Nico, it's Dan again. You guys struggled to score runs for about really the first half of the season. What was the dramatic turnaround the last week to 10 days? Yeah, I think we mentioned it some of the, the bottom of the lineup and just the depth of the lineup. Um, you know, Dansby and myself have been producing a little bit better in the middle there, and then um, our guys at the top have been awesome. But uh, the stretch that Miguel Amaya had there in August was really, really impressive. As a young catcher dealing with the staff every single day, 
and then developing throughout a season offensively. And um, he's been a guy who's always swung it at a high level and just didn't get a ton of upper minor league at bats. And so he's been learning on the fly in the big leagues and doing a great job of it. Nico, it's Ron here. Um, last year you had a huge year. Things got off to a slower start. You're red hot now. How hard it is? How hard is it to trust that process when things aren't quite going your way? Yeah, 100 percent, whether it's individually or as a team, um, this game's always going to throw new things at you. Um, you know, there's a lot of things that I know I can do better, but definitely take pride on learning from the experiences that you have. And uh, if it means improving as the year goes on, that's that's what it is. And every, every year is so different with the challenges that uh, show up. And um, I do feel like I'm in a good spot, though, right now to finish the year strong and help us win. Nico, final one from me. We had Shota Imanaga on earlier this season. He is one of the great personalities in the game yeah. currently. What's it like playing with him? What's it like playing behind him and being his teammate? Yeah, I mean, I think it just uh, can't emphasize enough how challenging it's got to be to come to a completely new place, even having success, just the, um, the language barrier and the cultural changes and everything that um, he's taken on. He's taken on with a great sense of humor. He's not afraid to fail. He's uh, always interested in learning and um, you see it in how he interacts with people, how he pitches, um, how he carries himself on off days. He's always doing something random in the outfield. And uh, <laughs> someone, someone who just like in, really enjoys being at the ballpark. And it, it shows up when he pitches, too. I mean, he gives up a home run. It's like, oh, that's interesting, more so than like freaking out or anything. And it's just like, uh, it's just that kind of joy of learning and playing that, um, you know, is really contagious. And it makes his start days fun. Like, you know, when he's pitching, it's going to be a fun day at the ballpark. The fans feed off him here. And, um, I'm glad he's on our side. He said the most surprising thing about this country was that you could turn right on a red light. That was what he thought <laughs> was the most surprising yeah. thing about the United States. <laughs> yeah, it's the little things, I guess. Yeah. Nico, I want to know about you. What do you like to do for fun? What are your hobbies? Uh, I mean, we're, we're lucky here in Chicago. I really feel like it's one of the best places in the country in the summer. And, um, live down closer to the lake so anytime we can get out by the water here whether it's on a boat or um, just hanging out on the waterfront making food uh, eating in uh, good restaurants here it's a it's a good scene and lucky to be in Chicago breakfast. Uh, what would you eat for breakfast Nico I haven't eaten breakfast yet okay <laughs> yeah. all right well uh, have a hearty breakfast good luck today good luck this weekend thank and thank you. you very much for joining us here on MLB Central yeah thank you guys have a good one